Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church of Clearwater. My name is Mary McKenzie. I'm a longtime member and an avid volunteer here, mostly in Service Saturdays, Express Saturdays, and all our beautiful gardens. And you're all welcome to join me. Prayer is the heart of our Unity ministry. Prayer request forms are found in the lobby and in the prayer room down the central hallway. And you may place them in the prayer request box that you see here on the platform or in the prayer request box in our prayer room. These requests are kept in confidence and lifted up in spiritual consciousness for at least 30 days by our ministry team. Now, let us affirm divine guidance, healing, prosperity, freedom, and peace for each and every name that has been shared as we begin our worship with the reading of today's daily word lesson. And at this time, please silence your cell phones and take a deep breath as we become centered. Many find God in the silence. Let us be still now for a time and help them in their quest. I strengthen my family through the power of love. Please say this together with me. I strengthen my family through the power of love. A towering pine or mighty oak draws on rain, sunshine, air, and soil to thrive. Similarly, we grow through the comfort, inspiration, ideas, and enrichment we receive from others. Family is a vital part of our spiritual support system. Today, I give thanks for my family and others who are important to me. As we gather for special celebrations, I embrace our similarities and differences. When we are apart, I enrich my relationships by reaching out. I strengthen our connection through simple acts of kindness, such as calling or sending a note. Near or far, I bless others with warm thoughts and prayers of gratitude for their presence in my life. And from Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so it is. Amen.
Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Unity and happy Thanksgiving week. Please stand and sing House Built on Love. One, two, three. This is a place of great power. We are all children of God. We find great strength as a people of prayer. This is a house built on love. This is a place filled with peace. This is a sacred space. We join our voices in glorious harmony. This is a house built on love. Beside your heavy burdens, be at peace and enter in. Feel the quiet voice of spirit, feel the steady strength of friends. Feel it as you're on a journey and at long last you're at home. Where your memories surround you and you'll never be alone. This is a place of great power. This is a house built on love. This is a place filled with peace. This is a sacred space. We join our voices in glorious harmony. This is a house built on love. Let's take this opportunity to join the someone standing next to you and say good morning. lights up this place. If you're aware that today is usually our food labyrinth day, then you could tell because of the weather we thought it might be nicer if the groceries we delivered to the food pantry weren't also soaking wet. So we didn't put them out in the labyrinth this time. You can see from the lobby and the back of the sanctuary, we've gathered quite a bounty this year. And many people will have a nicer Thanksgiving because of your generosity. Bless you. We're grateful. How many came out yesterday for Express Saturday to help us work? Oh, thank you. Everyone, everyone, thank you. So wonderful. We're truly, truly grateful. And if this is your first visit to Unity, we're going to call forward our light bringers. They have a welcome bag for you. We trust you'll use it to go shopping, to carry large amounts of money that you use <laughs> for tithing. And just remember when you look at it that you're loved. If this is your first visit to Unity of Clearwater, please give them a big wave so they can find you to bring you your welcome bag. OK, wow. I am guessing that some of you are here because you've been promised Thanksgiving dinner later in the week. That's great. And to all of you who got them here like that, good job. We know that each of us is here by divine appointment. 
This is something we love to say in unity. We're always in the right place at the right time to experience the blessing that Spirit has designed for us. Can you hear me all right? Oh, mm, yeah, I forgot the tape on this. You got to tape it. There's tape on her desk. I've got some earrings here that clip. Maybe I could just smash it right into there. Or not. I don't think Madonna ever has these problems. I don't know. My granddaughter, she knows what to do. Thank you, baby. That's great. Now I'm ready. As we begin this morning, we want to be aware that many people are in prayer today in our families, in our world. We are very much aware that there is a threat of terror in our world. This is not news, in a sense. But there is also something else, and that is a mighty faith and a mighty prayer consciousness, and that is our way. And so as we begin, let's declare our faith by speaking the spoken word of faith together. The words will be here on the screen. Together. There is only one presence and one power everywhere and always. God, the good, omnipotent, and God is love. And now we speak this word. In our unity of purpose, we are guided by infinite wisdom, renewed by abundant life, and prospered by divine love. We close our eyes now for just a time to hold a thought of prayer for all those in our minds and hearts today. We hold a loving thought of blessed release for Donnie Russo, husband of Karen, for Shannon Myers, beloved husband, as they begin a new journey of life. We hold a healing thought for Robin Hicks, for the family of Evelyn and Jenny as they journey to be with loved ones. Thank you, God, that all souls are going home, safe in the presence. And for Ed, the brother of Judy Tafelski, and his dear ones, we see serene peace, the safety of family and prayer. We give thanks for one another we give thanks in advance for answered prayer. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Now we speak aloud together in our unity tradition, our Lord's Prayer, together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us sing our way into meditation. so grateful for all that I have. 
We give thanks together for our many blessings and the shelter of our prayer extends to all those who seek healing and guidance, strength and abundance this moment throughout the world. For those who seek a home and have none. For those who have a home to which they feel they cannot return. For those who dream of a home that is peaceful and safe. For those who must rebuild a life, a family, to have a home. For those who long for remembrance of closeness with God, God has not left you, beloved. God is your home, welcomes you, is in the midst of you, right now, come home to prayer and be at peace. We give thanks for answered prayer. Amen. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. And so it is. We always choose a responsive reading for every Sunday lesson to gather from scripture keynote ideas that help to bring home the lesson theme. So each Sunday I select four quotations and after each one there's an affirmation that we speak aloud together. There is so much power in the shared spoken word of faith. The scriptures will appear on the screen. I'll read them rather quickly and then we'll speak the affirmations aloud together. The first is from the story known as the prodigal son that Jesus told. The son got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Together, God is love and always welcomes me home. Moses explained to the people that if they forgot the covenant after entering the promised land, the Lord will scatter you among the nations, yet there too you shall seek the Lord your God and you shall indeed find him when you search after him with your whole heart and your whole soul. You shall finally return to the Lord your God and heed his voice. Since the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not abandon and destroy you, nor forget the covenant together. Even if I seem to forget for a time who I really am, and whose I really am. God does not forget me. Though you may have been driven to the farthest corner of the world, even from there will the Lord your God gather you. Even from there will he bring you back, and he will make you more prosperous together. Even if I lose my way, God will always bring me home again. From the letter of James, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 
together. Sweet memories of my spiritual home live inside me still, and I am forever coming home. And now we have a beautiful song that embodies this message. Enjoy it with all your heart. My grandmother's house had apple trees With lilacs by the door And a cool dark porch with a wooden swing And a root cellar under the floor My grandmother's house was quiet And smelled of rhubarb pie and there was always a pleasant word For the neighbors passing by My grandmother's house had lace curtains With sunlight dappling through and the lazy breeze in the cottonwood trees And a morning dove or two My grandmother's house was spacious And safe and warm and whole And every detail is etched upon my soul Now gone are her kindly hands And the colors of her days And the hopes and the dreams and the apple trees Have long since passed away But to me it's more than a memory It's living inside of me still and the seed so faithfully planted will flower again on some future hill. My grandmother's house had apple trees and lilacs by the door and a cool dark porch with a wooden swing and a root cellar under the floor My grandmother's house was quiet And smelled of rhubarb pie And there was always a pleasant word For the neighbors passing by There's that wonderful voice of Sue Riley. We're so very grateful. Thank you. That wonderful voice. My dad uh, has a favorite CD, and it's, it's Sue Riley's voice. He listens to it all the time. I love that song because it reminds me of my grandmother's house. It's kind of an idyllic setting in the song. My grandmother's house had lilacs, too. But grandmother probably didn't have that nice apple pie that was described. She had gone to work in a shirt factory when she was 13, so she never mastered cooking. She called it her experiments. <laughs> Sometimes they worked out, and a lot of times they didn't. But <clears throat> being at her house, where we always went for Thanksgiving back in the day, she always got out that lace tablecloth that was an inheritance. It's in a box now at my house. It started to fall apart, but I just can't get rid of it. It reminds me. At my grandmother's house, there was love. 
And I hope that was true for you. And if it wasn't, then you can begin to create that in your own life. My grandmother showed her love by taking in wild critters. Um, in, the, in St. Louis County, it wasn't like it was a wilderness, but um, animals would find her. You know, there are people like that, that it just seems that a wounded bird or something would sort of find her. And I was thinking about that the other day and how she would just figure out ways to rescue it and nurse it back to health and be so very patient with it. We arrived here on um, Tuesday morning, getting ready to tackle the many tasks that waited for us. And Russ's, my husband's phone rang, he answered, it was someone who likes to sit by Peace Pond and enjoy the peaceful view. And they said, there's something wrong out there, and you'll need to come and take a look at it. They said, I tried, and I didn't know what to do. So he went right out. We have a lot of wild birds in Florida, don't we? A lot of And this one, it's called, I think, the Ahinga, uh, which is also it's the Brazilian language. And it means uh, snake bird or devil bird. And I thought, wow, you know, we don't believe in a devil, but do we believe in a devil bird? Hmm. I guess we do. But it had jumped up on the uh, overhanging branch over Peace Pond, and apparently we thought perhaps it was a fish hook, because that happens sometimes. When humanity and wild birds coexist, there are sometimes some issues there. But it was just that the beak of this particular bird has a kind of hooked uh, feature. And it had been uh, probably showing off its feathers and uh, got hooked on a piece of the limb and was just hanging by its beak, just like this, and kind of fluttering around. And you know, really, there are um, pretty much two kind of people in the world. One kind of people says, oh, well, nature's rough. I'm busy, and goes on. And the other kind at least tries to do something. And I want to be that second kind, like my grandmother would. So um, I mostly did what I do best, run back and forth and go, my goodness, my goodness, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, that's my role. It's sort of triage is what I do. But Russ and, and Howie, our helper, they got a rope and a saw, and Howie got up on the branch, and Russ got a hoe and taped it to a broomstick, and they had everything ready. They cut down the branch, and then the concern was, would the bird then drown if it was plunged into the water? They were able to get that bird up and soothe it and put it in a clean, empty trash barrel with a lid very gently, it was upset, understandably, and they put it in the back of the car and drove it all the way down to uh, the sun Sunbird, I can't say that fast, Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary. And they said quickly, oh yes, we'll take care of him, he'll be fine. And it was such a wonderful feeling. We're so grateful. <laughs> we really are. It's such a wonderful feeling. You know, it's a small thing, a small kindness that you do. And you might well say that in the overall scheme of life, it didn't seem to very, make very much difference in the well-being of planet Earth. But a small task like that can make you feel really human in a good way, in the good way that humans are human. And um, we just felt really happy about that. But when they got back, and it took hours, you know, grabbing the bird and going down and coming back. I did have to point out, I said, you know, we have a frozen turkey in the freezer. It just seems funny, you know, I mean, you say, <laughs> you risk your neck to save one bird and, I don't know. I guess we, we just have more things to think out. And, 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 and I wanted to let you know that that's the nature of unity, see, that's the nature of unity. It's where you get your answers questioned. 
we are, we're not saying to you that you have to become a vegan or a vegetarian right now. I think it's a great idea. And I'm leaning in that direction. I lean in that direction. And I think that that will be as I unfold in my understanding. I think that I will be there. But I also know that spirituality is not as much about um, what you eat as how you live, but also based in the fact that you can question and try not to judge others for what they're doing and just work on you. And where you can be kind, be kind. So we did have a sign down there by the Peace Pond, a nice little sign, and I had ordered it, oh, 10 years ago in green so it would blend in, but it blended in so well that nobody saw it. So, <laughs> so this time we ordered it in, in white with black letters, and it was not inexpensive, but an important message. So um, I'm going to read to you in case you haven't gone down to Peace Pond and actually read that very wordy sign, which is also, that's my role, run back and forth and say, what are we going to do? And then say a lot of words. <laughs> Peace Pond, a human and wildlife preserve belonging to the members of Unity Church of Clearwater. Take care. Many animals, including alligators, live here. You're welcome to feed birds bread or bird seed. For safety and serenity, be aware, intelligent, reasonable, and responsible. We put the four transcendental precepts in our little sermonette sign out there. Please, no racing, skateboarding, or ball sports here. Be kind and fairly quiet for neighbors' sakes. Children under 16 years old must be with an adult. Dogs must be leashed. Please pick up after them. But I know a lot of people don't, and I just feel, well, it fertilizes the ground. <laughs> Thanks for disposing of trash responsibly. Clearwater police patrol the area regularly. Thank you for keeping the peace. It all fits on one sign. <laughs> no camping. See, I don't like to have signs that say no and don't. It seems so forbidding and negative. So we use the unity method. We think you're lovely. No. And we also think you're grand. You know, so the, the no is kind of tucked in the middle. No camping, swimming, or boating here, but be blessed as you rest and refresh. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. And then I had to say this, fishing is not allowed, but catch plenty of big ideas and beautiful dreams. Don't you love it? Yeah. I like it too. I really did like it. I think that it's an important message, and it says a lot about, about our church home. And when we were in California, Russ and Rob and I, for a conference early uh, in the summer, in the fall, we uh, saw a sign on Laguna Beach, and I wrote it down, and then we cre recreated that sign by the bookstore. And you may wonder, well, what? that's kind of a corny-looking sign. Why'd you put that gate up there? Well, here's why. Because one day when we arrived for work, someone had set up camp on those benches. They had. They had their clothes when washed with hose water and hung all up and beer bottles nicely in a row and a pillow and a blanket and just thought this is a good place to live. And I don't want to be unkind. I know it's hard to find a home. And we quite realistically understand that many people do not have a home. So how could we make that message clear that we don't want to run people off, but we have a special purpose for this space. So the gate says, this gate hangs well and hinders none. Rest and refresh, then travel on. <laughs> it's the gentle unity way. Unity way. Police have told us that we have at one time or another had as many as seven people camped out on these grounds. Now, it's great to be able to be welcoming, and we want to be that. But our concern is that it wasn't the safest or best place for them or for others. 
And yet it does make us aware that while we're busily preparing our homes, our gatherings for Thanksgivings, there are people that don't have that same luxury. And maybe it's because of choices they've made. I don't know. Maybe the immigrants that are circling the globe right now, migrating, running, sometimes awfully afraid, have various reasons. I do not blame you for fearing them. Hiding in their midst could be those with bad intentions. I hope and pray that these experiences will not change you from being the innately welcoming person that you desire to be. It's something we're figuring out together. We'll find a way. The world can just have just so many walls. Robert Frost, I believe it was, wrote a poem called um, Something There Is That Does Not Love a Wall. And he also said um, this beautiful thing. Home is where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. That's from a beautiful poem, by the way, I rediscovered this week called Death of the Hired Man. And it describes a man returning to a place where he'd done some peace work before, very tired and sat on the kitchen chair waiting for the owner to return. And by the time they had decided, well, perhaps they'd give him a little work, he had passed away. He just wanted to come home. People want to come home. I don't know what the details are of what drives people from their homeland. I especially don't understand what causes people to be so jealous and angry that others have a beautiful home, that they do things to damage and destroy it, kind of a collective human mental illness that we're trying to figure out. We need to figure it out. I had never read this poem before. I've only chosen a part of it. The rest was frankly too brutal to speak aloud to you. But these words I thought would be good today. It's called Home by Warson Shear. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well, your neighbors running faster than you. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you. I want to go home, but home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of the gun, and no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore, unless home told you, run away from me now, anywhere is safer than here. Even a glorious home, a beautiful home, a wealthy home, can be a dangerous home. We do not know. We pray for wisdom that we will know those to welcome and those to hold back. It's not a simple question. It's not easily attained. But I believe in this nation and in the nations of the earth. I heard an interview on the news recently, a woman in Paris saying we have our values, we are an ancient city, and we will uphold those values no matter what. And I thought she spoke wise words for all people. I like poetry. It often focuses those wise words that we love and want to remember, and the fact that it rhymes or has a melodic sound helps us to remember, hence the reason why we love so much of the Bible. It's written that way. Sir Walter Scott wrote these famous words, breathes there the man with soul so dead, who never to himself has said, this is my own, my native land, whose heart hath ne'er within him burned as home his footsteps he hath turned from wandering on a foreign strand. 
that feeling of wanting to be home. I realize most of us left home at some time in our youth. I left home when I was 17. I was very angry and hurt and scared. And the thing about that is that if you do it that way once, you'll probably have to do that again until you figure it out. And it's rather humbling. When you leave home saying what I did, you'll never see me again. And then some time passes, and you find you're asking if you can please come home again. And if you're allowed to, well, that's a grand thing. Maybe it's best if you don't, I don't know. But home is where you are, and you know who you are. That's what makes it home. Well, you know the old saying, you can't go home again. But I think it sort of goes with that one about not being able to step in the same river twice. Home changes, and, and you change. And sometimes it's rather bittersweet to realize the home that you used to go to for Thanksgiving. You cannot, for one reason or another, have it quite that way again. But don't give up. You can make something new. Our amazing Pat and John Krogan, who mined our Unity Cafe with so much love and patience, they have a tradition for their Thanksgiving. They buy themselves brand new pajamas, order turkey hoagie sandwiches, and rent movies and watch them all day. <laughs> Aren't you jealous? I am. Wow. I think it's very sweet. You know, the great thing about tradition, sometimes you can't keep doing the old ones, and you make new ones. You make your own traditions because things change. But somehow all the songs about home, they ring in our hearts. You know, that be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Everybody knows that, no place like home. And then the ones that are a little bit more, more recent, perhaps, I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger, a traveling through, if you know it, saying, this world of woe. But there's no sickness, toil, or danger in that brave land to which I go. I'm going there to meet my father. I'm going there. No more to roam. I'm just a rolling over Jordan. I'm just a rolling over home. Uh, I love it. I could sing that because there's no copyright and it's a. Uh, it's okay. But I also like that one, I'm home where my thoughts keep straying, home where my music's playing, home where my love life's waiting silently for me. Home, what is it that makes you long for home, even if it's a place where sad things happened or where you know you can't return? It really is the longing that you have for truth itself, for your realization of your oneness with God. That is your real home. And when you know that, you no longer look back and turn into that pillar of salt that is a preservative with no value. Some things must change. Some houses must be torn down. Some places left and not seen again. But the home for which you truly long is your God nature. Our greatest hope is that this place reminds you of that home. That this church home that is so lovingly tended with no paid housekeeper, what a miracle. And so I went back to consult someone who knows this home better than most. Robert Preston, Bob, served on our board of directors at least three times and his wife Dorothea too, who passed this year. There isn't anything that they wouldn't have done to perpetuate this place. Was it for themselves? They loved it, but it was for you. 
And so I asked him to tell us about the times 40 years ago when he was on the board. You see, this church began in storefronts and homes and a funeral home, and uh, it was a struggle. The founding minister, the Reverend Mary Powell, had had a job before she went into ministry. She played the piano in the silent movie house. She had to watch the screen and play slower when the lovers were whispering and louder and tumultuously when the bad guys were coming in. And she had that amazing talent of knowing how to do that and to read hearts. She was the most elegant lady ever. They needed to have someone to play the organ for the services when they met down at the funeral home downtown Clearwater. Sometimes he would show up, and sometimes he wouldn't, and when he wouldn't, I guess Mary played. And when he did show up, he had often been playing all night in some beer hall, had a Hawaiian shirt on or something. He would sit serenely in the front row until the envelope with his $5 bill was placed on the music stand. His explanation, do re mi begins with the do, he said. <laughs> Often Mary put that five dollars in herself. Our church has never had a budget. It's a grand idea, a budget makes you feel very disciplined and on purpose. It means absolutely nothing. Because basically, you spend what you, have to, what you have to spend on what you have to spend it on. And if you don't have it, then you don't spend it. You can call it a budget if you want, but the word means little purse, and it's a limitation. Bob wrote this. He said he'd rather not come up and read it himself, although we asked him to. He said, you read it for me. But he spent a long time writing it, and I asked for your full attention. Some 40 years ago, when I was on the church board, we told the members attending the annual meeting that we had not prepared a budget for the upcoming year, nor would we. The figures included in a budget are the estimates, the guesstimates, and especially the opinions of many. None of these words are found in Unity's vocabulary. They tend to introduce an aura of uncertainty. The board chose to remain fixed on the concept of faith. Faith in the prosperity of the congregation and faith in their contribution to the offering every Sunday. Our faith was, and still is, well-founded. We see the results of that faith in our wonderful ministers, none better. Thank you, Bob. We see the results of that faith in our beautiful buildings and grounds, an oasis of peace and prayer. We see the results of that faith in our volunteers who radiate their fulfillment of their duties with enthusiasm. Most of all, we see the results of that faith in the blessings of our wonderful congregation whose caring, spirit-filled manner is a testament to unity. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for your gifts from your infinite abundance of all good. Our faith is ever rewarded. Bob Preston, will you wave to us at least and look back and see there he is back there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. We're very grateful. There are not many churches where an amazing attorney tends our grounds or washes our Unity Express mobile or people who write books also serve coffee and people who are literally great leaders in business, in life, wonderful friends do the most humble duties here to clean bathrooms and floors only for love. So once again, those four points that brought us to this place today. Remember this. This is your home. You take it with you. God is love and always welcomes you home. Even if you seem to forget for a time who you are or whose you are, God will always bring you home. You cannot leave this path. It's like unringing a bell. Once you know that God is love, nothing can ever, ever take that away from you. 
Even if you lose your way, God will bring you home. Send you friends, let books fall open in your hands, and bring you experiences that show you the direction home. If you ever got unity, you'll never leave it. And if you can leave it, you didn't get it yet. And somewhere along the way, you will. Sweet memories of your home live inside you still. And you're forever coming home. Just remember that here at Unity, we'll keep the lights on for you. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. Now we take our opportunity to give. I love this place where you never get a letter saying you need to give and how much did you pledge. It's uh, sometimes a bit tricky, but in faith it always works. We take our gifts of love and substance into our hands and we bless them with this powerful word. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. And let's stay in this high consciousness as we realize we're always going home. Thank you, Angie. Oh, 
that's the reason I'm going back to Eden. Take me back to Eden. I'm going back to Eden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Angie, you're such a gift to us. Thank you. You are. Thank you, God. We bless this offering of love and substance. We consecrate it to the glory of God, to the good of all humankind. We add a prayer that this Thanksgiving will be one of peace. At every table, let there be no conversation of politics or religion. <laughs> Let us all affirm these powerful words in response to anything that any crazy person in our family says. <laughs> you may be right. And God bless you. And so it is. Amen. <laughs> now let's, uh, we're going to bring in to help us with the announcements, Pat Warren. She has a few parting words for us. Here we go. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi, Pat. Hi. CDs and DVDs of today's service will be in our bookstore any minute now. Join Unity member Dr. Mary Ray at the Peace Cottage for a fun and interactive class series called Making Mary Choices, 12.30 to 2 p.m. for four Saturdays in a row, starting this Saturday, November 28th. Thanks to all who came out for Express Saturday yesterday between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to help with housekeeping projects in and around our church home. We welcome volunteers at our next service Saturday, December 5th. That same day, Dhamma Wheel Meditation Society will present the annual robing event, Katina, at 10.30 a.m. in the Peace Chapel. Anyone can dedicate a robe for a Buddhist monk. There are forms and envelopes on the info counter. Dhamma Wheel Meditation Society will serve a delicious vegetarian lunch buffet on a love offering basis in our cafe. Please sign up today. Today, our Youth of Unity is arranging our annual food labyrinth of donated pantry items for Religious Community Services Food Pantry. The RCS truck will come tomorrow to get the food from our lobby. Your generosity will give lots of folks a better Thanksgiving. We are also gathering two more types of holiday gifts, household items for the Buddhist monks next door, shampoo will not be on the list, and 100 <laughs> brand new small stuffed teddy bears in Ziploc bags for hospice holiday baskets for patients which will also include ornaments handmade by our YOU. If you'd like the chance to order a really elegant tote bag for crafts, music, or travel, and have it personalized for a great gift, see Jamie in our bookstore area and order today. She's donating her 20% commission completely to our Youth of Unity. Yeah. Wings. Women Inspiring New Growth Spiritually meets Tuesdays at noon. Bring a smile, a brown bag lunch, and join an uplifting discussion. We have teen night on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and a half hour peaceful prayer service at 7. On Thursday, except for Thanksgiving, Beginners Hebrew and Torah class meets at 7 p.m. in the cafe. To join the fun by serving on any of our teams, the cafe team, the welcome team, youth ministry, or the tech team, which I'm on, please see me after the service today. Well done. Thank you, Pastor Ron. I got it. Oh, one more thing. We've been talking about rejuvenating our kindred spirits, which is a social unity group. So if you'll just look for Ed, he'll be in the back of the sanctuary to get information from you. We're going to start gathering that again so folks can get together for fun unity outings together. It'll really be fun. And oh, the meetings at the Peace uh, Cottage during the next few Saturdays, 
are going to help you make merry choices all the way through the holidays, I strongly recommend it. Mary Ray is a wonderful counselor and unity friend. Now, let's sing in our youth ministry. This midnight of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This midnight of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This midnight of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This midnight. Um, wow, what a good-looking bunch. I also would like to ask Mary Ray just to wave so people can find you, so they can ask you personally about the sessions if they get a chance. And see Ed in the back of the sanctuary or in the lobby. He'll be in one of those two places to welcome you about kindred spirits. Let's all rise together. We would like to see the whole world enjoying a Thanksgiving feast this week. So in our hearts, we are connected to all people. Let's extend our hearts and our hands and speak our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now, beloved, let's join hands together. Thanks to our Youth of Unity for gathering all those great groceries for the RCS Food Pantry. Let's sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and let it begin with who? With me. With me. Let's sing. See you soon. Have a great holiday.
is more than enough in the universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Is there 